All right, good afternoon, everyone. Paul Tranny here. We're going to dive into some impossible geometry right now. So, Reina, Felicia, Florentino, Lego, uh, Joshua, welcome, everybody. S Suganesh, how's everybody doing today? Good to see you as well. We're going to dive into this. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to get this party started. I'll turn down the music a touch. Yes, slowly. Fade it out. All right, so let's dive into this. Uh, again, my name is Paul Tranny. I want to take you through impossible geometry. Okay, so just some uh, super cool, fun geometry that you can work with and create. In fact, I'll show you the popular pen, Penrose triangle, for instance, as I switch over, and I'll keep an eye on chat. Um, the Navajo Nation is in the house. So is Ghana. Uh, hello, Tevin. Good to have you here. Lebanon in the house. I'm broadcasting from beautiful, beautiful Colorado, where it's about 70 degrees out. So it's looking pretty nice. So you can kind of see what's happening here. Uh, this is the Penrose Triangle, as many people know. Again, you can kind of see the separate parts. Um, I can show you how to make this. This is sort of impossible geometry, as you can see. And uh, there's more versions of this uh, that I want to dive into. And I want to make this easy for you. If I make this hard, then I'm doing you a disservice. And I don't want to do that. So you can see here's another one. Again, just kind of starting with a really rough sketch and then going from there. But you don't even need to do that. Again, kind of messing with your brain as it gets intertwined. Uh, but, you know, how can you make this sort of thing? Uh, I got a 3D vortex I was working on. Ah. And then I have these fun shapes as well. So you can see them, these two right here. Everything is made from basic shapes. You can see these are the basic shapes that I would start with and uh, then kind of dive in from there, okay? So uh, this is being recorded, yes. You could always watch this later, Andre. So Ilakim, good to have you as well. So again, just making these fun geometric shapes, okay? So all this stuff, see how this one, these sort of... You know, so you have this infinite uh, sort of loop. We can make a, an even more uh, dramatic version of this one. You can see how this one kind of wraps outside and then it goes inside. So it's in the foreground and then it's in the background. You know, it's in the foreground and then it's in the background and messes with your head. Same thing with this one. Super easy to work with. Okay, so I'm not going to make this hard. Let me know if you have any questions. What shall we start with? Shall we start with the circle? Hmm. Circle's pretty easy. Yeah, let's let's start with the circle. We're going to start with the circle right here. So just taking this shape, you guessed it, drawing a circle. In fact, I'm going to start from scratch right here. Here's our circle, right? Uh, there's a number of ways we could do this. We could start connecting lines, okay? So we don't have to necessarily deal with, oh, you want to do that? Joshua says he wants to do the square. We can do the square. All right. Joshua, since this is live, I like to be able to accommodate you accordingly let's start with a simple square and uh we can take this and duplicate it you know and start to connect lines and make an isometric shape right we can start connecting some of this stuff right we could do that all day long if we want to uh, but i'm going to make this even easier because illustrator can do all of that for you if you just go to effect 3d down to extrude and bevel you can see it right here so this is what i want to do John, if that works for you, selecting that and then selecting preview, we can see, OK, here's an isometric, sure enough, an isometric shape. OK, not quite what we want. What do we want? We want it to be isometric, maybe off the left side. So you have from this drop down, we can just access sort of standard positions. So I can go to isometric left just like that. Now, keep in mind the size. I want to make this a perfect cube. So this is going to be it's currently 80 by 80. Well, right over here, for the extrude depth, I want to make this 80 as well. So I'm going to change this to, you guessed it, 80, just like that. Done. Let me kind of dive back into that because I hit enter. Um, and that's what we have. So here's our perfect, perfect rectangle. But let's check this out, uh, our perfect cube. We're going to go into more options, right? So from here... Um, yeah, not live on Behance today. Uh, we're going to have a, it's all about video this week. So um, we like to mix it up. 
So we have plastic shading, but really what I want to do is I want to have a little more control. I want to be able to see the lines behind it, the ones in the foreground and the background. So I'm going to change this to wireframe, and now I can see what that looks like. I can see those individual parts. All right. I'm going to rotate this a little bit because I actually want to create a little bit of a gap in the center like that. That's kind of what I want to do, something like this. All right. Um, so again, you can extrude really anything and get it at the angle that you want it at. And as soon as you have it set up this way, you can say, hey, I can actually play with the sort of the inside and the outside of this cube. OK, so I can I can play with this and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to click OK. Right here's my initial cube and I can't do anything with it right now. Right. It's just views it as a traditional square with this as an effect. But what I want to do is I want to expand that effect, which means going to you can see right up here, object expand appearance. So that's what I want to do, expand appearance. And now I have access to all of those fun lines. Okay, so hopefully that works for you, Ash and Joshua. All right. And again, I didn't have to worry about drawing all these different sides because you know what? I'm lazy. That's kind of what it comes down to. I'm like, ah, you know, I don't really want to do it. Okay, but now we have all of our different sides. Okay. Uh, so we can start to break this apart otherwise known as ungrouping. You can just right click and ungroup this and release any clipping masks that you might have. And let me just change the color of this outline so you can see it. Let's change it to medium blue. So hopefully you can see those lines now, but I'm just ungrouping this. So anytime you expand appearance for something, there might be a clipping mask or there might be uh, lots of elements grouped and you need to basically need to break that apart to get it to its ex essential um, vertices and uh, all those vector paths because I actually want to use the right over there we can see it the shape builder tool uh, to make this uh, All right, Joshua's on Adobe Draw. Adobe Illustrator Draw. Yes, you can totally concept. Oh, by the way, if you are an Illustrator Draw, you can actually use the perspective. There's actually a perspective option if you wanted to draw in perspective, but it's not going to give you an isometric perspective. Uh, anyways, release clipping mask. I basically have access to all of these various points now. Again, I have these different sides, okay? I have that side, I have the top, I have all these separate components. Now I can start to connect them all using the Shape Builder tool. Selecting Shape Builder, I can start to create or connect these two points. So I'll do a click and drag to connect those two. Okay, I'll connect these two, click and drag, and I can connect those two. Uh, but let me think about this. Let me actually go back to the final version as I select it. I want this top to be a piece and this bottom to be a piece. So let me just click back on this and do that for this right here. Click and drag, have that bottom be a piece. Yeah, that's all I want to do. Pretty straightforward. Um, from there, I can even Still make sure that's a piece and that's a piece. But here's all my different sides. I can select these two. Let's give them a nice color of yellow. And I'm trying to match that other one exactly. And the other one's a color of white. But there's sort of an impossible uh, square, as you can see. Everything looks better with a thicker stroke. So I'm going to increase the stroke thickness. And I'm also going to round the corners. And there we have what I actually had created earlier. As I turn on that layer, you could see both of them, obviously. Right? Cool. There's that one. Shrink that down. Can move it over there. All right. 
Yes, Joshua, you can always review this later. And uh, let's kind of dive into some more of this. This was this is all kind of follows the same concept. We could actually, I'm going to actually start picking up the pace since I'm going to do this a couple different uh, times. And I can also do something more complex like this if you want to as well. Uh, so let's dive into that. Turning that off. Yeah, turn this on. Hey, what about this? In fact, let's put this on its own layer. Same thing for this one. 3D extrude and bevel. Turning on preview. Turning on wireframe. And that's all I'm gonna do. Done, that's all I'm gonna do. It's that easy, I'm, I've left it at the default off axis front. Notice how it says wireframe. Okay, so that's the big thing. The only thing I'm going to, you know, take into consideration. Clicking OK. Expand appearance. Start ungrouping everything. Because we just need those individual pieces. And the big thing is, is this clipping mask. Anytime you use the shape builder, uh, it doesn't work with clipping masks. All right, with that done, can I take a closer look at this shape builder? Just because we can. Maybe I'll select some colors. Let's pick some fun colors. Click and drag those two. These two. Purple there. A darker purple here and a darker purple there. That already hurts my brain. Let's give this a stroke. And anytime you have something sticking out like that, it means you just need to round the corners and then that gets rid of that issue. So again, just a fun, impossible uh, octagon. Is that what that is? Uh, at your fingertips. Super easy to do. Caitlin, yes, I want to be creating more. So it's nice to see me creating again as well. Um, oh, I'm going to do one more, which is the circle. So let's kind of take a look at creating an ellipse. Just on a new layer. Why not? Switching up the music a little. All right, so we're going to do this again. 3D, extrude and bevel. Turn on wireframe preview, right? And there we have it. We can do sort of off axis or isometric top, essentially. But what I want to do is I want to kind of actually increase this to about, what, 200? The extrude depth, just so we can get it nice and tall. And uh, I want a couple of these shapes to overlap, so I'm going to tilt this down. I'm going to do something kind of like that. Oh, yes. And let's zero these out. There we go. This is the shape that I want, okay? All I did is increase the extrude depth. That's really the only different thing I did here. And look at how this is like perfectly uh, symmetrical. And just, it's like, as if I just rotated it up, you know, 11 degrees or 15 degrees. The big thing is, is I want some overlap. Let's try 20. Works for me. All right, clicking OK. And then from here, we can expand appearance. Here's my fun shape. Okay, expand this a couple more times. How's everybody doing, huh? Simon, uh, Simon, Simon R. Pro, hello. All right, happy that this is a new thing for you as well, Jahangir. Oh yeah, so I mean, Joshua, yeah, I can. You can go search for my name 
uh, on the interwebs, I guess, Paul Tranny, if you want to see my work, or go on Behance. I actually haven't even posted a lot of this work, um, but in general, yeah, I guess I need to update some things. Uh, so that's what I've done is I've expanded everything out, right? Because once I expand everything out into these individual shapes, right, these are, again, these are separate little shapes, right? I pull this out. These are extra like little shapes that I actually want to connect. Okay, so how do you connect all these shapes together? First of all, let's undo that. We could use the shape builder right over here, right? It says, hey, you know what? I could care less what group it belongs to, what the situation is. I can go ahead and connect all of those lines and make that one shape as I drag that down. Ooh, not quite that far. Let's undo that one. Not quite that far. Drag this up like that, that, that. Boom, all right? That's what I want. Drag, 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 connect, connect. Ooh, not that one. You'll have some missteps. It's okay. There we go. Got it. Now I have the shapes that I want. I can select this one, and this will be a gradient one direction. I can select this side. This will be a gradient the other direction, like that, OK? So you have this fun sort of Nautilus look. We can even change the color to, ooh, to see how that works. Notice how I actually, ha this is actually still a shape on the inside. Uh, and I want to show you that the shape builder actually allows you, if you hold on the alt key, to remove, you know, stuff from the inside too. So I've actually removed that shape on the inside because this is more along the lines of what I want. So again, fun to work with. You get the idea. Uh, and I can probably kind of cycle through some of these other gradients and find something maybe, maybe a little cooler, maybe blue. I don't know. I need more time with this. Okay. Yes, Joshua, you, if you, as a cartoonist, uh, yeah, you could totally incorporate this into your work because what if that you have, uh, you know, what if you have a character and uh, you have this character and you want them sort of walking along this edge and then do they disappear and pop up on this side and walk around in fact i'm just going to jump in here and i'll search for adobe stock so i might even have some silhouettes actually let me see i'm gonna search all my libraries and i'll find some silhouettes Ah, like this guy. Let's just actually extract. Oh, he is made in. Yeah, he's made in, uh, not in Illustrator, uh, but nonetheless, yeah. I would typically, you know, want to put a guy walking on this side and, you know, one guy walking sort of the reverse direction. Or is there, is there a ball that's rolling, for instance? You know, do we have some sort of sphere that's actually rolling around from one side to the other? Right? And that's what I want to show you how to do next. Okay, so let me pick this up a pace. All right, so uh, let's do... Uh, maybe something like this, this impossible triangle as well. You can do it the same way. So typically you need a basic shape, right? So we can use just this basic shape. Let's kind of move this over. Maybe just grab these elements. In fact, let's just switch over to that file. This will be even easier. Here we are. Okay, cool. So I've drawn this uh, Penrose triangle as it's known. And what I want to do from there is I want to do the same process of taking this 
guess what? This is just a stroke, okay? And I just used the star tool and made sure it's a three-sided star, otherwise known as a triangle. Go into effect, 3D extrude and bevel. We can preview it. We can already see that we're starting to create, and I'm gonna create this side right here initially. So I can do off axis, isometric right, or isometric left. I'm trying to actually ultimately match it. That's not the one I want. Let's try. Uh, let's even, we can even go with this. Let's go with this about 40 point extrusion. And uh, I'm gonna do off axis back is what that is. Clicking okay. I typically would want to take this and actually let me undo that using my new properties panel I can preview this let's take this to wireframe here's all the various various uh, vertices that I can get and then I can click OK and then expand appearance that way right and from there, it's a matter of doing exactly what I did before, determining what you want to be on the inside, what you want to be on the outside. And that's how I ended up with this. I know I cheated a little bit because essentially it's going from this to this object. Right? Pretty much those same angles. But uh, I'm actually going to move on to... Uh, what I was just talking about a second ago is bringing this into Photoshop. So I'm going to make sure I'm not ignoring the Photoshop portion of this. Joshua, oh, thank you. So good to hear. So uh, I did a stream last week that really dove into detail about building out this impossible triangle. Okay. But here it is. I can paste it. Pasting that from Illustrator into Photoshop as a smart object, as you can see right here. Right. I can always edit that later, but here it is all ready to go in this nice new file as a smart object, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and do what I just said. Wouldn't it be cool with that little ball kind of rolling around it, huh? Let's bring out this little ball, okay? This is what we'll use. I already had one created, making life easy. You guys want to learn a little bit about animation? Does that work? Uh, Joshua, I encourage you to follow Creative Cloud. And uh, I also do some live streaming on um, the Illustrator Facebook page. So you can check out more content there. So thank you so much. Felicia's in the house helping me out. Okay, so you want to do learn how to do animation? You ready for this? This is animation in... Wait for it. I'm going to get rid of all of this. Wait for it. There we go. Okay, cool. In fact, I'm trying to simplify this as much as possible. All right, so this is just going to be the background. All right, so check this out. I have three layers, sphere, triangle, background. Oh, I open up my timeline, okay? So your timeline might not be anything. In fact, I can, I should be able to delete timeline. This is traditionally how your timeline will look. Says, hey, you know what? You wanna create a video timeline or a frame by frame animation? No, I wanna create a video timeline. I can always make it a, an animated GIF if I want to later. Click create video timeline. And this is what I get. All these layers are associated with the layers over here. Right, so um, let's kind of pull this, let's pull out these two things. You know what, I don't even need this. Let's get rid of this. Even simpler, right? Because look, I get these little thumbnails. This is what I want to see. I really just want to animate the sphere though. So that's what I'm gonna do, taking the sphere. I want to animate its position. So I'm gonna do a twirl down and I'm just gonna open this up a little more. Has anybody ever done animation in Photoshop? Curious. 
Turning on position, it's going to give me this little keyframe right here. It says, hey, perfect. Scrolling in about a second or however long. Uh, moving it from point A to point B. Guess what? It gives you that second keyframe. Great. Fantastic. Scrolling a little further along. Going from point A to point B to point C. There we are, right down there. Okay. Zoop, zoop. And what do we want it to do? We want it to disappear. So what do we have to do there? We need to create a mask. <sighs> Create a mask. Um, number of ways to do this. I'm just going to add a duplicate this triangle, put it on top, and this triangle. I'm actually going to remove this portion. All of that stuff. There we go. So this is what I just made. I just made, let's invert it, this piece that's going to be on top. So now this little ball is going to disappear. So turning on all those layers, that's on top. Scrubbing back, zoop, zoop, it's going to disappear, maybe to right there. In fact, this is what's going to happen there. You're still going to be able to see a little bit of it. Because at this point, it's going to go a little further. And I'll show you the payoff in a second. You don't have to watch me do every single step, but that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna zip over here, and I'm gonna clean up this mask a little bit. Felicia, hopefully you're liking this. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, and of course, everyone else, I'm gonna add some white, because white's gonna mean it's going to disappear. Scrolling up to there, boom. Let's move this into position like that there we have it i'm just gonna hit play you can watch this i have it going slower than normal so everybody can see it nice and easy uh judy how you doing good to have you here and that's the animation and I'm, and it basically made an impossible animation based on an impossible illustration done in in crazy impossible illustrator kathleen in the house kathleen good to see you Kathleen's in the house. How you doing? Kathleen, I think, has a, um, a an illustration channel going on or a challenge going on. Uh, feel free to do a shout out about that, Kathleen. I think it's at, I don't know, I think you're doing it today at like 6 p.m. I don't know. Let me know. But look at this. So we had sort of what we started with, which was this simple animation of that ball zipping around, right? Pretty easy zip 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 we add a little bit more to it like i did in here same sort of pieces i kind of did some a different overlay of colors but let's just turn that off you can see these same animations happening right here right so that's one ball zip, zip, zip. you do have to add your own sound effects this is the second one that comes in says hey you know what i'm going to start traveling on this side down down oh guess what i'm going to disappear and I think it's this one. One of these. This is the next one that might kick in. Is that one? And uh, we can see it travel around as well. Around and around we go. Cool. Yeah, come back to yeah Creative Cloud at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Learn some Illustrator basics. All about it. Seven day challenge. Awesome. Today is fruit. Oh, maybe this is like a cherry or something. I don't know. Maybe if we, I, I should have done impossible fruit, that would be fun. Is that a thing? But again, you can kind of see this travel around, zipping around, impossibly every which way. And this is really just your gateway drug into After Effects because somebody is bound to say, hey, why didn't you use After Effects? Right? You could use After Effects as well to do this very same thing. Uh, I just added this final layer, which is an overlay of colors because I wanted something a little cooler, a little more retro, or a little, I don't know, just cooler looking. And you can see that's what I have there. Oh, an impossible burger. Like, what would, it, what would an impossible fruit, like an impossible banana, or an impossible, yeah, impossible burger? What would, that's so interesting. That would be interesting to create. Now, 
Now I probably have to participate in the challenge, don't I? Uh, but that's about it. We can do kind of a step back, and believe me, you can actually watch the recording. You can scrub back through this. I've done this part before. You can see this impossible triangle. It was really just a matter of putting different parts of a triangle together to make this piece right here. If we step back a little further, we can see these super easy, impossible shapes that we made all by basically extruding a shape, selecting, or actually let me, sort of extruding a shape, 3D extrude and bevel, and then turning on, you guessed it, wireframe. And now we can sort of play with the ins and outs of all of these fun little shapes right in here, okay? That's all I did, even in making this one. Easy, 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 cool. All right, let me know if you have any further questions. I've been going for about 30 minutes. I can, uh, I can, I would love to make, um, like the infinity symbol would be another really cool shape to make. So I'll have to think about that, how I do an infinity symbol. Um, would be a great idea. There you go. You get the idea. Get rid of that line. And holding down the option key to eliminate that middle piece. Looks like I still have some of these little fun little guys hanging out there. I can remove them. There we go. All right. Yeah, okay. Felicia thinks the infinity symbol would be awesome to recreate. So I'm going to have to think about how to do that. And I will work on it. So I guess I have some homework. Maybe it's like an infinity banana, and then that would actually work for the uh, drawing challenge that's happening later today. All right, there you go. Lastly, anytime you get little weird anomalies kind of poking out, just change your corners to rounded, and that typically will fix it. All right, in infinity symbol up next. That's what I'm going to do, Caitlin, if that works for you. Um, oh, so the infinity symbol of MC Escher. Oh, man. Can you tell that I'm just typing that up? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Um, yeah, anyways, so this sort of thing is like super fun. Like how can you recreate this? This is a, this should be Escher, this is Escher. Uh, I don't know if you actually made that. Here's some other items. Oh, there's another one. So yeah, super cool and great idea um a lot of this can be done by the way oh this is a great example so we'll kind of i, I really want to make this the cool thing is is like if you are dealing with this 3d or pseudo 3d in illustrator you can actually map artwork to these 3d shapes so i can actually have these birds and i can paste them on this on the side of uh you know an infinity symbol like this so that's what i'll work on uh, i guess i have a job to do and uh, thanks so much, everyone watching. These are fun, too. All done pretty much the same way. All right, everybody. I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, this week, all this week, on behance.net forward slash live, you will see that we have... It's going to be all about video. So this is just a shout out to the live streams going on. Uh, you can watch the replays, but if you click on schedule, sure enough, you can see motion graphics, character animation, sound design all this week. And that's on Behance.net forward slash live. So, all right, everyone, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. <sighs> Maybe do an eight extruded. That's good. 
Okay, cool. Have a great day, Felicia, Caitlin, uh, Judy, Kay, Wilson, and everyone. Always open to your suggestions. Thank you so much for being so kind. Be kind to one another, right? Just be kind to one another and eat whole foods. Eat lots of fruit. I don't know. Even though it contains a lot of sugar, it's like a good, good sugar and it's delicious. All right, everybody have a wonderful day.